thank you, Father God, for the deliverances that's going to take place, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for those, Father God, that want to receive a church home that they're coming in on today, Father God, and making a decision, Father God, to submit, to surrender to you wholeheartedly, Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. There will be changes of stories and there will be settlement in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing us to come into your house on today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, it is my pleasure to welcome you out today to our Sunday service. Hallelujah. Where we are entering into his house with thanksgiving and praise and an expectation to receive settlement, a change of story in and throughout our lives. So we just want to welcome you here in person and on Facebook Live. And we just ask you right now before we get started to phone a friend, text someone, and get your pens and your notebooks out. And then get ready for you today. Excited. And you want to share it with someone else so that they can receive a change of story. So right now we're going to welcome up the praise team. And we're going to usher in the praise and worship and honor that's due unto our faithful Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
beginning. Amen. Are you all excited about your supernatural start?
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. So I am coming before you to tell you about an awesome event that we're having. Another supernatural star. A new beginning. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. All right. So the Lord, well, first, the um, heartbeat of this ministry is soul winning. So the Lord has opened doors and given us um, a region that we go and minister to, and that's in Spring Valley Apartments. Okay? So we, we go out every third Saturday, and we witness and tell the community the good news of Jesus, the gospel. So everybody say, next Saturday, next Saturday April, the 23rd, April the 23rd, from 2 to 4 p.m., we are turning it up. We turning it up. We turning soul winning up. Um, by you know, we 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 turning this thing up. So what we're doing, we're having a love in unity in the community um, out at Spring Valley on April the twenty third. So we would like to invite everyone to come out and be a part of this event. And also, um, we're going to have sign-up sheets um, immediately after service. It's going to be in the foyer at the table. So we, we are looking for, we are in need of teams, um, of people that would like to help set up. If you want to um, be a part of the soul winning team, part of our health clinic, we're also going to have... Um, the children's ministry team where we're gonna we're looking to have activities for the children like face painting bounce houses um, for the youth ministry so when you go out to the sign up um, sheet it's gonna it's gonna be an areas that you can serve and so we'll like for you to indicate that area and once you indicate the area that you want to serve stick with that that area okay because we're gonna um we're going to have teams and we don't have to, you know, sign up for different ones. We want to remain and stick with the one that we have because after we um, have our teams like the health clinic and we're going to have a food truck, um, we're going to have a designated time where everybody is going to come and we're going to get a word because we're bringing them a word. Now, I want to go to one scripture. Um, before we close out, and that's Matthew 9, and it's verses 35 through 38. Amen. And it reads, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth the laborers into his harvest. So when we have been going out to Spring Valley, this is what we have seen. We have seen the people, multitudes of people that need, they, they need Jesus. And Jesus, when he was out there, he says that he was filled with compassion. So compassion is seeing what people are lacking and being moved to provide it for them. Compassion is God's love in action. And so we saw that Jesus answered to that. It was, it, was, it was two things that he saw. One is he was moved with compassion because he, he saw the need. And so that's what we want, want to be. We want to be moved with compassion to provide a need. And so we need you all to go ahead and sign up. Um, today and even on Facebook Live, we want to encourage you because everyone can do something. 
David purposed in his heart to build the Lord a house. And the Lord, he said that just because you formed this in your heart, you devised this in your heart, he said that he counted that. You know, he honored David because he had that in his heart. And one of the things that I saw, too, is that David, he didn't get a chance to build that house, but he devised it in his heart. And so when they got ready to build the house, every every um, detail, every from the gold nails to the to the um, shuckles to the to the um, the the area and the degree the cubits that they built it was in so detail and it started because David he had this in his heart so I just want to encourage you that we all can do something even if you are on a Facebook page and you send because we have we have our flyers on a Facebook um, page and you can go out there and you can just share it with many people even if even if it's just for you to tell others to be able to come to an event that we already prayed about we already believe God for and you may have you may have family members you may have loved ones that you believe in God for and you've been talking and you've been doing things but it doesn't look like in the natural that anything is happening your job may be just to get them here so they can be ministered to but we all can do something and if you can't be there you can sow into this event you can sow because your money will go for you it will go and it will equip the laborers that will be there. So Jesus said that the harvest is plenteous. And when we're out there, we can't have enough laborers. We've been going out there and we've been equipped. And the more that we're there, the more God just continue to send people. He just continue to open the door. So I just want to encourage you today, purpose in your heart. You can do something and be a laborer because God, he will honor that. He never forgot about David purposing in his heart. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. And now I want to call up Dr. Uzi for our ministry of giving. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Are we excited? Yeah. Are you sure? This is, this, you know, this is the time for you to put your hand in your pocket and give. You know, when it comes to bringing out, you know, faces will begin to change. Please don't let your face change. Say, my face will not change. This is when I will be excited to give. Because... The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. If you believe that, say hallelujah. Amen. I was asking the Lord today shortly. I said, Lord, what, what would you want me to just say about giving? He brought me to two places, love and faith. You see, God in his infinite mercy gave us his best Jesus I was thinking about it I said why did God not give one of those angels to come and die for us you know those like skinny malnourished one because it would, it, it, it would have been possible but God said no I'm not going to send any skinny malnourished angel to come and die for the whole world he said, I'm going to give my best. And he said, it is my only son that I'm going to send. If God could give his best, if God could give all he had, beloved, how much can you withhold all you have? Even what you have, the Bible says, belongs to me. But he's giving us that charge. He said, bring Bring them in, bring them, bring those gifts into my, into my, you know, 
into my storehouse, into the house, not to the pastor. He's giving us a command. He said, bring them and try me. If you look at the Bible, only one place in the scriptures, the Lord says, try me. And it is in giving. Praise the Lord. He said, try me, just do it. You know, when we got born again, we got so excited. God gave us, took us from a place of suffering, so to say. You can boldly say, I have not been sick since I got born again. But are you, are you really living in health? It's one thing for you to say, I'm not sick. But are you healthy? It's a question you have to answer. And then you say, oh, I'm no more owing. The Lord break that bondage. Nobody can say I'm owing. So God took you from minus, owing. And you can boldly say, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in the zero. I'm not owing anybody, thank God. But do you want to remain in the zeros? Or you want to take a step forward and move into the surplus? So that you can boldly say, I have no need of nothing. The Bible says, he will supply all your needs. It is God speaking. God wants to take us from that place of minus, beyond the zero, to the place of surplus. So that you can boldly say, I don't have any need. He will take us onto the place of want. What is want? I, well, I want that. Well, not for now. Or I desire that, but not for now. I will have it when I will have it. But needs and necessities. You know, God wants to take us from that, you know, that level of always praying for Thursdays to come so that you get paid on Friday. Start speaking in tongues on Thursday. Because you know Friday is coming. No. To get paid. God said, that is not the kind of life I have for you. You don't pray for, for Thursday, for Friday to come and get paid. Because your, your, where you walk is not your source. The Bible says he is our source. He is our source. You remember the Bible said, God told Abraham, he said, that's your son that you love so much. Give it to me. What? My only son, but God did it first for us. He told Abraham, he said, that's your son Isaac, whom you love so much. Give him to me. In other words, sacrifice that son. That's giving. But God says, God already knew what he was going to do. God, in his infinite mercy, that asked Abraham to give his only son, already knew what he was going to do. The Bible says, Abraham, sorry, yes, Abraham did not wish God was, wish that God would, turn, would think otherwise. He said, the next morning, he saddled his donkey, took two of his servants, and the lad, he said, go to Moria, and I will show you the mountain where you made that sacrifice. The Bible says, Abraham was preparing. He was preparing. First of all, he saddled the donkey. He took to serve. He was preparing to give. Beloved, before you leave your house, prepare to give. Don't come to the house of the Lord. You put your hand in your pocket. You look, ah, $20. No. Put it back. You put your hand in the other pocket. Another 20 No. I'm looking for that $1. You put your hand here. $1. Ah, that's it. This is happening in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, no. If God could give his only begotten, when you put your hand in that pocket that is 20 rejoice. Don't begin to look for one dollar. Give that to any. Because the Bible says, he that sow it sparingly, God is no more. You're giving one dollar, one dollar will come back to you. You're giving 20, 
in, in a multiplied harvest, it will come to you. Praise the Lord. Finally, you know, the Samaritan woman. The Bible says, Jesus met her on the well. He said, if you knew who is telling you to give me water, he said, you will hurry and you will give me. He said, if you knew. So there's a knowing. When you know and you give, your story will be different. But when you give without knowing, you are donating. There's a donation, a difference between donating and giving. You may donate and not be blessed. But when you give in revelation, the Bible says you are not only heaping your blessings here on earth to transcend beyond. Where the thieves and the robbers can never go there and destroy. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to give? Are we ready to give? We will turn, we'll turn it on to the uh, blessed uh, you know, choristers to give us our songs. And if you want to give your offerings or your tithes, I'd like you to raise up your hand and let the usher give you your envelope. We call it civil loaves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Pray in tongues in 20 seconds on that seat that you are sowing. Speak in other tongues. Liba sota karaba yekele bonto. Jo krodo bo se krodo bo le gera bato alibo sata karaba ya. Liba talaba ya. Basata karaba ya. Rebo se krebo se krana bo le gera bato alibo sata karaba ya. The devourer is rebuked for my sake. Mata karaba ya. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
back to life. Those promises, those prophecies, amen. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life, Speak life to that day of marriage. Speak life to those finances. Speak life to your career. Speak life to your health.
wants to be glorified in the midst of his people. He wants to be lifted up on high. Oh, as we praise him, as we acknowledge him, as we worship him, oh, as we thank him, we'll have encounters with him. And he'll change our story. He'll change every text into a testimony. Every trial into a trial. As we acknowledge him, as we acknowledge him, he'll lead us and direct us. As we make him bigger, greater, oh, glory be to God. Oh, I keep hearing him say, I, I want you to magnify me, glorify me. I want you to acknowledge that I am the greater one and there's none greater than me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard the Lord say, not only am I with you, not only am I for you, but the greatest of all is that I'm in you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are acknowledging the greater one in us. And I hear some of thee. Amen. He was tested, tried beyond measure. Amen. Glory. He was pressed. 
Oh, praise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He lost his children. He lost his money. He lost his business. He lost his health. Amen. But the Lord gave him another supernatural start. Gave him another new beginning. He restored him tenfold. His latter were greater than his former. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. What about Rahab the prostitute? Amen. The Lord gave her another supernatural start. A new beginning. Amen. She was the scum of the city. The black sheep of the family. Amen. But she seized the opportunity to hide the spies. Amen. And put forth some labor where the Lord is concerned. Amen. And the Lord made her promise that when the Israelites came in to take over the land, and she would hang a sheet out the window. Amen. Glory to God. Her whole household would be saved. And when the children of Israel came into Jericho to take possession of that city, they acknowledged the promise, they acknowledged the word, they acknowledged the covenant that they made with the woman, and the woman got another supernatural start of new beginning to such a degree. We can find her testimony written in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, in the Hall of Fame chapter of the Bible. The woman received another supernatural start. A new beginning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All through the book of Acts, we see people encountering the Lord for supernatural stars. New beginning. Paul and Silas. Amen. In the Philippian jail. Amen. For preaching the gospel. Backs beating. Feet fast and stop. Bound by situation, circumstances. Amen. And the oppression of man. But the Bible says at midnight. They began to pray and sing praises unto the Lord. And the prisoners heard them. And God shook that place. And everyone handcuffs fell off. Everyone doors flew open. And everyone was set free. What happened? The Lord gave them another supernatural start. A new beginning. Hallelujah. not just the acts of the apostles. It just started with them. It didn't end with them. Amen. Amen. The book of Acts is the acts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is still acting. Yes, Amen. Is. Why? Because he's in us. Amen. And he's on us. Hallelujah. And he's here to do something. He's here to act. He's here to minister to you another supernatural start. He's here to minister to you a new beginning. And if you'll let him work, if you'll let him act, if you'll let him do what Jesus sent him here to do, you will find yourself right, right in your own book of Acts. <laughs> you'll find him acting in and through you. Amen. You'll find yourself with a book of Acts testimony. You'll find yourself with a book of Acts praise report. Hallelujah. Glory to God because the Holy Spirit has been sent to do something. Amen. And we're going to let him do something today. Come on, congratulate our praise and worship team. Amen. 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 Turn to somebody, amen, and welcome them, appreciate them, amen. Smile real big, let them know how excited you are that they decided to come to church today. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Well, uh, on our midweek services, Thursday, 630 Amen to 730. We've been teaching on the series, a teaching called How to Access the Holy Spirit's Help in Prayer. How to Access the Holy Spirit's Help in Prayer. You know, we can't pray accurately and effect efficiently unless the Holy Spirit helps us. Yeah. Amen. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. Yeah. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Amen. Glory to God. So unless the Holy Spirit help us pray, amen, we won't pray adequately. Amen. We won't pray according to the will of God. Amen. So in order to pray according to his will and give results in prayer, we have to access his help. God sent him to help us to pray effectively. Amen. And apart from his help, apart from his assistance, we can't pray effectively. Amen. And uh, so the Lord is, is, is uh, opening up that series of teaching. Amen. So if you hadn't been a part of it, get, get on Facebook Live. I think we're on part four right now. This week we're going to be teaching on, amen, uh, how to access his help. 
There's some things we can do to access his help. Amen. Just like you have money deposited at the bank. You just can't show up at the bank and pull up to the one and say, give me my money. Amen. They're going to look at you and say, are you all right today? Amen. And you're going to say, it's my money. I want it right now. I'm in a hurry. They're going to say, okay, we're in a hurry too. And the next day, you know, amen, security is coming. Amen. To take you off with your money in the bank. Amen. Glory to God. No, there's a process, amen, that you have to implement to access that money. So it is with prayer. Amen. There's a process, amen, that we have to implement to access the Holy Spirit's help in prayer. Amen. Glory amen. to God. So we're going to be teaching on that because I believe that the Lord, if we can go in the grocery store and get the product we went in there for, how much more should we be able to pray and get what we asked in the Father for? Amen. The Bible says, amen, in Matthew 7, verse 11, if you being natural know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall our Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? Amen. God is inclined. He's poised to answer our prayers, but He can't break His rules, His terms, and conditions just to do so. Amen. 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 He got to be able to answer our prayer and honor His word at the same time. Amen. Glory to God. And that's why the disciples, I don't know why I'm teaching on this, because a lot of people pray themselves religiously and traditionally crazy. <laughs> they, they never get any results, but they keep on praying. Never take time to find out why they're not getting answers. If I were to take a hand, a, a, a poll today in this church and ask you, amen, do you remember, amen, when you got an answer to pray? Amen. That alone should tell you you should stop and learn how to get answers. Amen. Amen. Or else you're going to pray yourself religiously crazy. Amen. amen. Traditionally, amen, insane. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you don't get results when you go to the grocery store. Don't you stop going there if they don't ever have your pride? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you, you start calling and asking who they have it first, right? Amen. Well, see, that's the reason why a lot of people stop praying because they don't get results. Look there in Job 21, verse 14. I'm just, I, the Holy Spirit, Pastor Nady, telling me to labor on this a little bit before we get into word. Amen. Because we need to prevent ourselves from doubting God, questioning Him, and accusing Him, taking Him to court. Amen. I prayed and nothing happened. Wait a minute. Glory to God. Job 21, verse, 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 verse 15. The Bible said, what good is, what profit it is, what profit it is if we pray to him? What profit is it that we serve the almighty God? Depart from us, we desire not the knowledge of your ways. What is the almighty that we should serve him? What profit should we have if we pray to him? Can y'all see that? They, they had no sight of the importance of prayer because they wasn't getting any results. Amen. And so they said, why well, keep going to this grocery store and they don't have our product? Why are we going to keep, we might as well go to man. He can help us more than prayer. And, and so to prevent us from getting like this, we got to get results when we pray. Amen. We can't never end up like this questioning whether or not prayer is going to change you. Amen. Or we can obtain God's help in prayer, a change of story, a testimony in prayer. We can never question God's willingness to answer prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Look at Jeremiah 33, verse 3. He said, call unto me, and I will answer thee. I will answer thee. I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you know is not. God is committed to answering our prayers. Amen. But they have to meet his terms and conditions. Look that with me in 1 John chapter 5. Look at verse 14. He said, if, if, uh, if he said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So if we ask him something that's not consistent with his will, he's not obligated to hear us. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Amen. I said, are we seeing this? Amen. Amen. But if we know he heard us, we also know that we have what? The petitions, the requests that we've required of him. 
How do we know he heard us? Because we asked according to his will. Who knows the will of God the best except the Holy Ghost? Mm. Glory to God. He has the mind of God. John 16, verse 13. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus said in verse 14 that he'll take the things of the Father, the things of mine, and show them to you. Whew. Or when the Holy Ghost show you your house, your spouse, amen, your career, your business, oh, it's yours. It don't matter what your job, career, your credit, it doesn't matter what your enemy is saying. When the Holy Spirit show it to you and say, pray about this, I'm telling you, you finna pray that thing from heaven to earth. Amen. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, we need to understand the importance of the Holy Spirit's role in prayer. Amen. I'm telling you, he's awesome. He'll help us so awesomely. Amen. Glory to God. Every time, amen, there's a delay in me receiving something that I've been praying about, I go through the scriptures and about the scriptures that indicate to me the role of the Holy Spirit, how he helps me to pray, and then I get results. Every time. Every time. Sometimes he'll tell me, don't pray about that. Don't pray about that. Don't pray for them. Amen. He'll, he'll do that. Amen. Jesus didn't pray for everybody. In John 17, look at verse 14. Jesus said, I pray not for the world. I pray only for those whom the Father has given me. Amen. So you don't get to pray for everybody. If Jesus didn't pray for everybody, why, why do you think you're going to get to pray? No, you only get to pray for those who he tell you to in his word or he showed you by the Holy Spirit. Are y'all saying this again? Woo! Glory to God. That's why we need to show up. Amen. Because this is a powerful teaching, you all. It's powerful. It'll revolutionize your life. You'll quit depending on others and start depending on God. You'll have renewed encounters with Him coming Amen. through for Him. Amen. Woo! Amen. 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 I said, you'll have renewed encounters with Him coming through for you. Glory to God. Your prayer life will take on new meaning. Amen. It'll be your secret weapon. <laughs> Be like Hezekiah when you get a bad report. Amen. Glory to God. You'll turn your face to the wall and pray. Amen. And if you have to move on your behalf, and when your life should come to an end, you'll get 15 more years added to it. Oh, my God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's the teaching. It's the teaching. It's the knowledge. It's the wisdom. It's the insight. Amen. Like Dr. Uzi said, amen. When you know the one you're giving to, amen, you go from giving donations, amen, to investing in your destiny. Amen. <laughs> How y'all see it this way? Amen. See, the key is knowing him, knowing him, knowing him, knowing him, knowing him. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, well, let's get into the word today. I, I just, the Holy Spirit told me today to pick back up on our teaching that we've been teaching on uh, a prompt response to instructions. Amen. Determines God's reaction to you. God's reaction to you is determined by your response to his instruction. Mm. Woo! Glory be to God. What is gangster right there? Boy, I, I, let me say that again, Mr. Thomas. Amen. God's response to you is determined by your response to his instruction. Ah, if I could just get y'all to see this. I used to be crazy when this is concerned, thinking that God was just talking to me talking. Amen. But I came to the conclusion that he's the habitual truth teller. That he's the one without error. I said he's the habitual truth teller and he's the one without error. Amen. So he don't talk just to be talking. Amen. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He said the word of God is quick, sharp, powerful, yeah. and in two ways. Yeah. Glory to God. He said all things are upheld by the word of his power. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, so, so the Lord says, uh, his response.
response to us is, is determined by our response to instruction. Amen. Look that with me to Proverbs uh, uh, chapter 23, verse 12. Proverbs 23, 12. Then we'll go to Proverbs 14, 13. I'm sorry, Proverbs 4, 13. But first we'll go to Proverbs 23, 12. Thank you, Bible man. Apply your heart to instruction and thy ears to the words of knowledge. Are y'all seeing this? What did he tell us to apply our heart to? Instruction. What does he put emphasis on? Instruction. Glory to God. Look there in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. He said, take fast hold to instruction. Don't let her go. Why? Because she is your life. Whew. Glory to God. Your life is determined by how you deal with instruction. Amen. The quality of life you live in the earth is determined by how you respond to instruction. Amen. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. He said, take fast hold to it. That means there's an enemy to instruction. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And see, instructions are time sensitive. Yes. Somebody say time sensitive. Time. I say instructions are time sensitive. Yes. Amen. See, once God instructs you, time goes into place. Yeah. That means He gives you a space and a season to respond. And if you let that space and season in before you respond, Amen. Glory to God. You get turned over to what belongs to those who don't respond to instruction. Now look at this, notice there in Proverbs 1, let's pick it up in verse 23. Proverbs 1, verse 23, amen, glory to God. Instructions are time sensitive, amen, glory to God. Once God instructs you, time goes into place. Amen. amen, notice, he said, turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour out my spirit unto you, and make known my words unto you. Now notice the next verse. Amen. He said, uh, hear it, because I called and you refused. Watch this. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. See, he was ministering to us, instructing us. Amen. But we were devaluing it, despising it. Mm, come on, next verse. Watch this, you all. Amen. Glory to God. But you have said it no, all my counsel and with none of my reproof. Next verse. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Remember my opening statement, how we respond to instruction, determine how God responds to us. Notice, I will also laugh at your commodity. I will mark when your fear coming. Will God act up, deal with us like this? That's how we deal with instruction. Amen. 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 How you deal with instruction will determine his reaction to you. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. I can be on the favorable side or the misfortune side. Amen. I determine what side I'm on by how I respond to instruction. Amen. 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 So quit kicking the cane, blaming others, and making excuses. Amen. 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 Just let instruction have a place, have a home in you. Amen. And your story will change automatically. Once instruction have a home, a resting place, man, it's going to breathe. It's going to bring forth fruit. And that fruit, oh, I'm telling you, it's going to remain. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. See, when God instructs us, he expects a response. Amen. And our response to instruction determines his response to us. Woo, I found this secret out. Amen. I was asking the Lord, Lord, why, why ain't nothing changing? Oh, why am I going through this? Why did I get Lord? And the Lord said, I already told you what to do about that. Amen. And see, I'm requiring him to say something new other than what he already said. Amen. 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 He already told me, love my enemy, pray for him, bless him, and do him good. Yeah. Amen. He said all things work together for them. Amen. They love him. He said, great peace have they who love thy word and nothing won't offend them. And here I am, you know, playing commercials with this love instruction. And I expect all things to work together for my good. Never. Amen. Are you seeing this? Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Take it together. Run it over. Shall it be given into your bosom? And here I am playing with that instruction, taking the motions with it.
doing it conveniently, reluctantly, despisingly, grudgingly. Come on, somebody. Our response to his instructions determines his response to us. Woo! Glory to God. So he said, I'm going to laugh at your command. Next verse. I'll mock when you don't feel coming. Amen. Notice this. He tried to prevent this, but they didn't have, he didn't, the, the instruction didn't find a home. Didn't get a response. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind with distress and anguish cometh upon you. Look at this, y'all. This is in the Bible, y'all. I said, this is in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Amen. Next verse. Amen. Amen. God is serious about instruction. Amen. Then shall you call upon me and I will not answer. See, time had had, had ended. Remember what I said, instructions are time sensitive. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Whenever you hear some instruction, time goes into place. God allots you a space of time to act in view of what you see. Amen. <clears throat> are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Say this with me. Instructions, instructions. Are, always are always time sensitive. Time -sensitive. He tells us, don't forsake the assembly of the saints as the manner of some meals. As you see that day approaching, Thursday, Sunday, word encounter, Tuesday, amen, set your heart to engage. That's instruction. I say that's instruction. Amen. Glory to God. And so, see, we can't, we can't, we, we can't despise instruction. We can't look at instructions based upon our convenience Amen. or how we feel about it. Amen. Once instructions are given, you don't have an opinion. Amen. I y'all saying this? Amen. I said, once instructions are given, you don't have an opinion anymore. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Notice here. Notice Peter's response. Let's go there to Luke chapter 5. Amen. Uh, verse, let's pick it up in verse 3. Amen. Luke chapter 5, verse 3. Amen. Peter and his company. Amen. Notice, he entered into one of the ships with Simon and prayed him to thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked the people out of the ship. Next verse. Amen. And then he, uh, after he talked them out of the ship, the Bible said, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Peter, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a drop. And see, this is what I'm saying. You don't have an opinion. Because, listen, we've trained ourselves to deal with instructions in light of how we feel. Opinionated. That's the way we've conditioned ourselves. Amen. So we got to recondition ourselves. Amen. Where instructions are concerned. And see, if you don't watch this and pay attention to it, you'll slip back into your old man and your old way of dealing with You'll come up with your opinions. Yeah. And this is what happened to Peter. Jesus was trying to win Peter away from his opinionated state. Yeah. Woo! He was trying to renew his mind to his instruction. Because Peter's response to Jesus' instruction determined Jesus' response to him. Glory to God. Now watch what he said. And Simon answered and said, see, here comes his opinion. I said, here comes his opinion. I said, Jesus didn't even ask him for his opinion. Did he ask him for one? See, this is why we gotta watch this, y'all. We gotta be careful. We gotta be paying attention. We can't be sleeping at the wheel. Amen. Amen. And Peter was all what he called himself, though. But I, I'm telling you, he's like us. I'm telling you, when you get to where instruction is concerned, you have to be paying attention. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Jesus wanted to make Solomon rich and wise. Amen. So he connected to his response to instruction. In Proverbs 4 verse 20, he said, my son, pay attention to my word. Incline your ear unto my saying. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Keep it in the midst of your heart. For there are life to all those that find them and health to all those who respond to them. That's what he told him. He said, I can't make you rich and wise without instruction. Woo! So he told Peter, launch out into the deep. Let out in there for a drop. He come Peter with his opinion. We've been out all night. Ain't caught nothing. 
Jesus didn't even ask him for that. But Peter was on the watch. Amen. He was, he was renewing his mind. Amen. He was going from opinionated, amen, to receiving instruction, amen, like it was given to him. He knew a time component was in place. Amen. So the Bible says, amen, even though we've been out there toiling all night, haven't caught nothing, nevertheless, at your instruction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to launch out into the deep. Amen. And the Bible says in the next verse, and when they had done this, see, when they had acted on that instruction. Glory to God. What happened? They enclosed a great multitude of fish so that their nets began to break. Amen. Next verse. Watch this, you all. Because once you begin to act on instruction, you set in motion a perpetual, ongoing, continual response and reaction from God. He don't know how to stop. Once, once you don't, if you don't stop, he don't stop. Amen. <laughs> oh, really? God. Amen. His response is, that is a direct reaction to your response to what he said. Glory to God. If I could just get that fixed in our minds. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I ain't got to sing you happy, who you happy. Oh, it's going to turn around tomorrow. Oh, just wait. Oh, forget about your yesterday. Yesterday gone. Oh, no, you did not forget that. Man, just give me some instruction. Show me what to do. Don't entertain me, man. I need some instruction. What if your teacher in your college, your school class, talked to you like some preachers? Song you in your lesson. You'd be like, what's wrong with my teacher? You don't go to school to get entertained. You go to school because you want instructions. It will help you discover your destiny and equip you and decorate you for it. Well, shouldn't that be the same way you come to church? Like you go to school? I wonder if you went to school like you went to church. Would you pass any test in life? In life, it's a test. It's a race. It's a fight. And the instructions you keep and act upon and respond to will determine how you grade on the test. Amen. Amen. The first thing you felt when you came into this world was what? Pain. The doctor hit you on that butt. Pow. Ah! What does that doctor say? Welcome to your warfare. Welcome to your tents. Welcome to your race. Welcome to your fight. And then he put you in the hands of your parents, in tutors, in, in different leaders, amen, giving you instruction. Because every phase of your life, amen, glory to God, is taking you to a test, a race, a fight. Amen. So you need proper training and instruction. Are y'all seeing this? And men ministers are using this setting to carouse and entertain people. Amen. amen. And this is the most instructional, the highest type of instructional setting, amen, that God can employ. Amen. 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 Just like the school is just for the domestic thing, but the church is for the spiritual component. Amen. And Jesus said, man, should not live by bread and all about every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So you have two appetites, a natural and a spiritual, and both require instruction. Both require to be fed. Are y'all seeing this? So I'm, I'm not coming to church playing. I'm coming hunting instruction. Glory to God. He said, I'll give you pastors out of my own heart which shall feed you, feed you, feed you with knowledge and understanding. Glory to God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, so my response to instructions determine God responds to me. Yeah. And once you respond to the instruction, you put, you put a perpetual, ongoing, continual effect in place. Amen. And God doesn't stop until you do. Amen. Woo! Glory. I say he doesn't stop until you. I will show you this today. You don't never want to stop obeying instructions. And if you do repent and get back, amen, get back engaged, amen, because I'm telling you, God will stop when you stop, but if you don't stop, he won't stop. He said, drop down to me, and I'll draw down to you. Woo, glory to God. 
So if you don't stop drawing that, he going to stop drawing that hill. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. That's why he told us, he said, continue in prayer. Watch in the same with, uh, with thanksgiving. He said, men always ought to pray. He's telling us what ought to do always. Because he doesn't stop until we do. When you stop, he stop. He got to. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I bind in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, I lose on heaven. If you don't do nothing on your part, I can't do nothing on my part. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now think about this. When you respond to instruction, you put a perpetual, ongoing, continual reaction from God in motion. Watch this, look, watch this. And they beckoned to their partners. Watch this. They both singing, they nets breaking. Now they're calling for their partners. So God ain't stopped. Because they responded to the instruction. And when you respond to instruction, it's like an avalanche. You know, you ever watch when the snow on mountain, how that snow come off that mountain like an avalanche? It don't seem like it's ever gonna stop. It just come up, wash out everything. Amen. I'm telling you, that's what you say in motion. An avalanche move of God. Continual, ongoing, perpetual move of God. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. So they both sing it. They dance break it. Now they call for their partners. Hey! Hey! Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Come and help us. And the Bible says, amen, when they were, that's why you need to be connected to people who respond to instruction. Oh, God. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Amen. Glory to God. No, the stable partners with people who responded to instruction. And look what happened to them. The Bible says, they better than their partners. It that they should, that they should come and help them. See, they go instruction. See, Sister Maud, old secretary of the church, she got up and gave us some instruction, didn't she? She said, come and respond to the soul winning event. The Spring Valley, amen, soul winning evangelist outreach campaign that's going on on the 23rd, next Saturday from 2 to 4. Then she did give us some instruction. Glory to God. Amen. So they're telling them, hey, come and help us. Come and help us. Come and help us. So the Bible said when they came to help them, notice what happened. They feel both ship, so did they next begin to break. A, con a, a continual, perpetual, ongoing reaction from God. Because he don't stop until you do. Look at 2 Kings chapter 4. Amen. Glory to God. Watch this right here. I want to just show you the outcome, the effect of, of responding to instruction. It has a continual, ongoing, perpetual effect. The devil can't stop it. Your enemies can't stop it. Amen. I remember in 2012, through wrong choices, bad decisions, what business relationships is concerned, I came up under the worst persecution that any, I don't, I'm telling you, that I ever came up under. I found myself in a federal court. Amen. All kind of indictments. They seized all my assets. You see, I'm telling you, it didn't seem like, amen, the devil and all his cohorts had ganged up on me. Every time I try to get something going again, it come other people persecuting me. Amen. Every time, amen, something good happened, the enemy come and try to shake that. That went on for three years. But the Lord gave me some instruction. Woo, glory. He said, love those who persecute you. Pray for them. Bless them. Do them good. Woo! Glory to God. I said, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, you don't know what they said they're doing. He said, do them good. Amen. Bless them. Pray for them. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Give them something to eat when they're hungry. Give them something to drink when they're thirsty. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And I kept looking at how I felt. You know, bad on here. And the Lord said, love ain't a feeling, it's a choice. And then he showed me, he said, nobody that I died for were my friends. All of y'all were my enemies. But I commended my love towards you while you were a son. Now go do that to them. Woo, go reproduce me to them, not your feelings and opinions. Woo, 
Boy, I tell you, it, it was like it was like paving a new road. You know, you got to pull out stones, you got to tear up, pull up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I ain't never heard love choose the love. I thought I loved based upon how they treated me or how I felt. I didn't know love was a choice. Amen. Woo -hoo -hoo. And then he told me, I had some trouble with that. I, I do it for a little while, then I take a commercial. And then he showed me Romans chapter 13, verse 8, through 9, 8 through, 8 through 10. He said, oh, no man, nothing but love. He said, love is the fulfilling of every requirement. And he said, love not only is a choice, but love is what you owe your enemy. And if you don't pay your bill, it's just like your life bill. If you don't pay it, your services will be cut off. Yeah. Mm. You know, when your lights get cut off, you got to go manufacture you some light. You got to go get cameras, flags, light, everything. I mean, you just, you, you know, <laughs> your services cut. And the Lord said, if you don't love, if you don't choose to love, if you don't pay them back love, if you don't reproduce me to them, reproduce the cross to them, Amen. He said, your service is going to get cut out. Let you pay your bill. But if you keep paying your bill, you'll keep getting services. Woo! And don't you know the Lord ended that crisis? Amen. He gave me three free lawyers. Amen. Glory to God. And every charge was canceled. And look at how he done restored us. Glory to God. See, we kept paying the debt of love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I, I love my church members and, and my brothers and sisters, but the people who lying on me and don't lie, you mean tell them? He said, love, love them. Love. He said, that's who you really owe. Amen. So when the person put in front of you at the, at the red light, flip you off, guess what? They say, pay your bill. <laughs> pay your bill. Pay up. That's what they say. Pay up. Pay me, Lord. Bless me. Do me good. Give me something, Lord. <laughs> See, that's a notice saying your bill, dude. Yeah. Now watch this. Look, look what the Lord showed me, y'all. Because I'm telling you, prompt response to instruction determines God's prompt response to you. Yeah. So if you want him to respond promptly, then you've got to respond to them instructions promptly. Yeah. Now notice, notice what he said there in, in, in uh, Proverbs uh, what's that, uh, 327. This is what he told me. He said, this is who you really owe love to. Because he said, what good is it, Matthew 5, 43 through 48, what good is it to love those who love you? He said, even the publicans do that. But I say unto you, amen, bless your enemy. Pray for them. Do them good. That's what Jesus said. Now notice what he said. Withhold not good to whom it is due. Did y'all see that? When it's in the power of your hand to do it. He said, don't withhold it. Don't withhold it. That's the instruction. Now, who is good do? That's who I want to know. Because whoever good is due, that's who I owe it to. Amen. Go to Matthew 5, look at verse 43. I'm just showing y'all how the Lord delivered me and set me free. Amen. Amen. I'm just showing you how to keep him connected to you in the midst of the storm. I'm showing you how your outcome can be only traceable to him where mankind know that he for you. Mm -hmm. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Notice, he, Matthew, Matthew uh, 5, 43. Matthew 5, 43. Jesus said, you, you've been heard that it's been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. He said, but I say unto you. Notice the next verse. I say unto you. Who said it? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The habitual truth teller. He's the one without error. So keep that in mind. Who's saying this? The habitual truth teller. The one who is without error. So what he's saying to us? Love. See, remember that. You don't have no opinion in this. Alright? You don't got no opinion. You gotta watch your opinion. I'm telling you how to, to live like a conqueror. Amen. I'm telling you, sickness and disease, it try to get on you. You just frown at it like you do some kids that's acting up. And you ain't got to say nothing. They just look, boy, mama ain't playing with me. 
Why don't you know sickness and disease if them kids can respond like, how much more can they get him? How much more than what you're going through? How much more can the devil do? Don't be supposed to say, well, she ain't playing. Jesus I know, Paul I know, Mary I know, Neil I know. <laughs> they don't never get to say, who are you? Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? All this is connected to how I respond to instruction. And there's no greater instruction than love. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, verse 11, it says, now appear faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is what? Love. Love, love is the greatest. So when love is instructing you to love, that's the highest. That's the highest and best. Amen? Because you are fulfilling every requirement in the Bible when you love. And most people, where love is concerned, particularly where they're enemies, they're opinionated. They are opinionated. It get quiet like this. When I was shouting and talking about them scriptures, y'all were like, oh, yeah, glory to God. But now when I get on this love, our responsibility, amen. See, faith, this is what faith is, sister one. The Lord spoke to me. He said, faith is sharing responsibility with God by keeping his instruction. See, faith requires you to do what God said. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. So you share responsibility with him in doing what he said for the delivery of the promise. Amen. The promise can't be delivered without you doing what he said. Amen. Woo! So faith makes me responsible Amen. to do what he said. I share responsibility with him to deliver the super into the natural. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. God. Woo. Amen. Amen. Now watch what he said. Love your enemy. See, this who this who good is due. This is somebody say, good is due to my enemy. Good is due to my enemy. And I'm gonna pay. Say it with me. I will, I will pay my debt. Pay my debt of love. Of love. When it's due. When it's due. I won't be late. I won't be late. I pass due. I pass due. Amen. Soon they flick you off at the red light, just go on paying. Soon they cuss you out in the break room, go on. Soon as you get the email, the text, the, 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 the tweeted, the Instagram, soon as you get it, soon as you get it, just pay it. Bless your sister. Glory to God. Pray for you today. And now we owe you good. Is there anything I can do for you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, 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 you respond to the instruction. And it sets in motion an avalanche, a perpetual, continual, ongoing response and reaction from God. Yeah. I ain't never recovered from 2015. Yeah. Never will. Yeah. Woohoo! Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I don't learn the secret, y'all. Amen. Don't withhold good from whom it's due. It don't matter what they did to you. They didn't do it to you anyway. They did it to Jesus. Because the Bible said you crucified with Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, I live, but the life I live in the flesh, I don't live it by myself or for myself. I live it for him who died for me and rose again. They going at the Jesus. When Paul was persecuting Christians on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, amen, verse 6, he heard a voice from heaven and said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me, not them? You persecuted me. And that's why people, when they take communion, amen, instead of receiving the supernatural, they stay sick afterwards. Why? Because he, uh, what's that, 1 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 23 through 28, it said when you take communion, you examine yourself. Amen. And, and many people are sickly, weak in their body, not discerning, not discerning the Lord's body. See what that mean? Not discerning or examining how you treat the other brothers and sisters. Are y'all saying that? Yeah. Even in giving, people give tithes and offerings, but, but you got to give instructively. Yeah. Yeah. It said in Matthew 5, when you bring your gift to the altar, and you remember that you have all with a brother or sister, he said, leave your gift, go sell that all, then come back and offer your gift. Yeah. All you're giving is donations. Yeah. And like Doc said, 
donation don't, re don't, don't require reaction from God. Amen. And have your conscience a little bit in two days, or, you know. But it don't do nothing for you supernatural. Amen. Amen. It doesn't engage God. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Even when you pray. Amen. In Mark chapter 11, verse 25. He said, when you stay in prayer, amen, forgive yeah. if you have all of this. Yeah. So prayer, give it, serve it, if it, if it got all in it. Mm. Mm. Glory to it don't make It's not needing the instruction. It's just opinionated. Oh, boy, am I helping somebody. Yes. Yes. Are y'all seeing this? Yes. Because we're living in an aggressive environment, y'all. Yes. This environment we're living in is ferocious. Yes. So it requires an aggressive word yes. to overcome it, to rule over it. Mm. And God trying to give us another supernatural start. Yes. He's trying to give us a new beginning. Yes. And it's connected to instruction. And our response to it. Amen. 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 Are y'all seeing this today? Amen. Second Kings chapter 4, and we'll close. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm so thankful to the Lord for y'all coming out today. Amen. I, I just believe that 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 you know we we are in some we in some some supernatural times, brother yes, Jesus. I mean supernatural. The, the, I mean, one act of obedience can set in motion a lifetime of blessing. Amen. It, I believe we in them days, them Rahab days, where she done heard how good God is Amen. and what he done done for others. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so when the spies came, they were, they were sent by God. They could have went to everybody's house and, I know they going to hang out at a prostitute house. Yeah. You know why? Because she was moving toward God. Yeah, yeah. She was moving towards him. Yeah. And so when they got there, they saw her already in motion. Yeah. We, we know your God. We done heard yeah. <laughs> Now when y'all come back and take the land, make me a promise. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. See, when you're working with instructions, instructions yeah. will keep working with you. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. If God catch you on the path of doing what he say, glory to God. I'm telling you, he's going to turn your tests into testimonies, your trials into trials. Amen. 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 Now watch what he said, 2 Kings chapter 4. Let's pick it up there. Where is that at? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Amen. This was a, 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 a woman. She was married. Her husband, he, he, he was a servant of God. He died. He got. He left them in debt. And the Bible said, uh, my, your husband, notice, thy servant, my husband. Notice how she, she said that. Y'all catch that? She said, before he was my husband, he was your servant. So me marrying him didn't mess with his service towards you. It just happened. <laughs> so single people, if you're going to get married, if you find, find out, qualify them based upon whether they'll help you serve God or hurt you. in your phone and qualify those people in your phone based upon how they'll help you or help you in serving them. Amen. Go with it. Because the company you keep determines what accomplish you. I don't know how I can get this. Y'all get anything? You set a perpetual, ongoing, continual, uh, avalanche reaction from God. I mean, good come out of everywhere, from every quarter. Favor, amen. I'm talking about favor that unusual, rare, extraordinary, and exceptional. Where God just puts you on people's mind when they want to give, when they want to do something good. Your name come up. Hallelujah. In their discussion. I'm telling you, good come out of the woodwork. Good come up from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's looking for you. Bless, break through, 
healing, deliverance, promotion, increase. It's looking for you. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. It's attracted to you. Why? Because it's attracted, it belongs to instruction. Now listen to this, we do. Now there came a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet Elijah and said, Your servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thou servant did fear the Lord. She's she making him responsible. She said, He kept your instruction. Mm. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. And watch this. And, and the creditor has come to, to take unto him my two sons to settle that debt. She got a complaint, don't she? And she taking it to the man of God. And she said, this, this don't belong to me. That's right. That's right. Ooh. Right. So she says, Sister Mary, this ain't my portion. This ain't how it's going to end for me. Sending this back to where it came from. Return to your sin. <laughs> this is unacceptable. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And that's the confidence you have when you're keeping instruction. Amen. Just, it just gives you a confidence, a boldness to stand in the midst of any storm, in the midst of any trial, in the midst of any test, whether you cause it or somebody else. When God gives you what to do and you do it, you come out of it. Like I found out. 
really dumb. Well, we learn by experience, but that's the most brutal way to learn anyway. Yeah, you can learn somebody, but you don't want to learn, you want to learn by instruction. Amen. 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 Look at him. She said, my nigga, my two sons, be coming to the table. Ah! And watch what the man of God said. He gave us some instruction. So your breakthrough is connected to the instructions you hear and keep and respond to. Watch this. And then I said, to her, what should I do for thee? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, thy handmaid have not anything in thy house except a pot of oil. Somebody said, I got something. Glory. You got something. God is requiring something from you. Amen. He's not requiring what you don't have. He's requiring what you do have. Amen. Now notice what he said. Amen. Next verse. Because this, this, this response to instruction, it carries an ongoing, continual, perpetual effect in your life. Abraham never recovered from the instruction of sacrificing that. He drew a sworn blessing out of God. Amen. Amen. David never recovered from wanting to build God a house. God said, for you want to build me a house, you know what? I'm going to build you another house. You think the one you got now, gangster? Well, wait till this one I'll build. Boy, that thing. Perpetual. Oh, no. Every time you think about questioning or not responding to instruction, think about perpetual, ongoing, continual. See, from a negative perspective, in Proverbs 1, verse 23 through 28, God said, I'm going to laugh when your commandment come, because you didn't respond to my instruction. Amen. But from the positive effect, amen, ongoing, continual, perpetual. Good. Amen. amen. Whenever I hear instruction, I understand time goes into place. And if I let this space in before I obey, I can be inviting crisis that I could never recover from in my life. Amen. So I don't want to gamble like that and let this time in Amen. before I respond. I don't want to get at the end of it and then finally respond. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Are y'all seeing this? Yes. The Bible said that one of the commandments is not to tempt the Lord your God. Amen. What is tempting him? Resisting instruction. Glory to God. Remember, he's the habitual truth teller. He's the one without error. Watch. He said, go buy the vessels abroad in thy neighbors. Empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Now, what was the, the instruction? Borrow not a few. Let's see if she did it. Come on. Amen. And when she, when thou come in your house, you should shake the door upon thy sons and pour out all the oil, the vessels thou should set aside that which is full. Watch this. Notice that. She, and she went from him, shut the door upon her and her sons and brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Continual, ongoing, perpetual. And it came to pass when the vessel was full, and she said unto her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not another vessel. Are y'all seeing this? She went, I'm telling you, she went and got every vessel, amen, that was in sight. Are you seeing this? And as long as she bought them vessels, amen, the Lord kept full. Are y'all seeing this? I y'all see, as long as she obeyed that instruction, and then what the man of God took, the all care for it, the all care for it, the all care for it, the all continual, perpetual, ongoing, avalanche effect on her life. Woo! I y'all see this? Woo, glory to God. Now watch this. Amen. She said, there is not another vessel and the all what? Stand. Now watch what kind of effect it had on her life. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, amen, notice that she told the man of God, and he said, do what? Go sell the oil, pay your debt, and do what? Yeah. Yeah. And who else going to live besides you? What? All right, so, so watch this. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a famine, in the midst 
discover how to come in and fix it. This girl and her father is living high off the hall. Woo! She got to spread every night. She ain't got to pray about money, no food, no provision, nothing anymore. She is exempt from worry. I said she is exempt from worry. Are you seeing this? Yeah. At first they were looking at her, oh, she's just a widow with her two kids in debt. Man, a poor old thing there. Yeah. Let's see if she's all right. Let's see if we got some cans of good we can take her today. Boy, oh, but when they brought these cans of good. <laughs> Amen. She went from a consumer to a producer. Yeah. Amen. She went from being in debt to being debt free with extra. from God. Her obedience to instruction. Her response to instruction. Are y'all seeing this today? Come on, let's stand to your feet and celebrate Jesus. Oh, we thank the Lord for this world today. Oh, your word is a lamp under our feet, a light under our path. The entrance of your word do administer to us light. It gives us direction. It gives us insight. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, for this revelation on prompt response to instruction. Lord, continue to speak to your people, Lord. Renew our minds to that which you have instructed us to do in times gone by. One of the roles and responsibility that you sent the Holy Spirit is to put us in remembrance of things you've already spoken to us. Lord, if there's something that you've spoken to us that we've yet to do, Lord, we repent right now. We turn from it. We have a change of mind and heart right now. We change our mind for the better. And we turn to you and we ask you to give us some more space. Give us a renewed space of time to act upon this instruction that you've given unto us. So that your labor with us will not be in vain. So we thank you that you will begin this good work within us, this good work of settling us. This good work of rest. Yeah. Oh, you who began this good work of giving us another supernatural start, a new beginning, you will perfect it and complete it and perform it until your return. And we thank you that because we've acted upon the instruction that you have instructed us, that your response, your reaction to us will exceed that which Peter had when he caught the boat load of fish. Oh, he will exceed, oh God, and be even greater than the response with this widow woman and her two children being dead free and having extra. Oh, it will be so great, oh Lord, that it will be after the Psalms 126 order. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we be like those in dream. Our mouth is filled with laughter. Our tongue with singing. Oh, glory God. Woo. Oh, I see it happening. I see it happening. I see it happening. I see it happening. Lord, we strip ourselves of our own opinions. What we think. Oh, how we look, how we feel. Oh, oh, we strip ourselves. We strip ourselves of any opposition, anything that's contrary to what you told us to do. Now we ask you to revive us again. Revive us again. Revive us again. Revive. to your instruction, to your voice, to what you say. Responsive, attentive, alert, reactive. Oh God, make us alive. Revive us again. Quicken us according to the word. We receive all the joy of our salvation restored to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the Lord spoke this to me. He said, because you made adjustments in your heart to align it right with my instruction, 
without wishing it was different. Without protest and without argument. I am aligned toward you, sir. And this week you will find yourself all oh, rejoicing and praising me and thanking me because of the great things that I would have done for you. And that which is seemingly difficult, that which is seemingly hard, that which is seemingly delayed and irresponsible, the Lord said, the time has turned. Oh, glory to God. The time has turned today. Amen. And it's rushing towards you. It's headed towards you. And you shall possess it. You shall handle it. You shall see it. And you shall thank me for the great things that I've done.
I'm your healer. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, be
as belonging to us and not him. See, if we see ourselves belonging to him, it's easy to make the connection. See, now he committed him to his intent, to his responsibility. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. See, your soul is the gatekeeper, the determination of what comes into your life. David said, I bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And don't you forget all his benefits. So you can't let your soul just open the door to anything. Amen. 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 You got to tell me, don't you forget. Jesus. I know how you feel it. I know what you want to do. But don't you forget. Bible woman, put this up there on the screen. Psalms 42, verse 6. Hallelujah. Where is it? Psalm 42, verse, verse 6, somewhere about it. Thing. It's talking about soul. Why are you discontented? Why are you cast down? Look at what he said. He's talking to his soul. He said, I ain't gonna let you act like that today. Oh, my soul is cast down with me. Therefore, when I remember what? I will remember from the man of joy. I remember something. Look at what he said. Very next verse. Amen. Glory to God. Deep call it the deep end. Next verse. Amen. Glory to God. Yet the Lord, it's, it's, it's somewhere, is it somewhere, is it, is it another verse in there? Verse 5. Verse 5. Thank you, Sister Jesus. Verse 5. That just quickened in me today. Y'all, your, your healing, your body is the result of your soul. Your soul determines the degree of health you walk in. Amen. 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 David said, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? And then he told his soul to do something. Hope! Don't you stay like that. You better hope. You better hope.
in every fashion and area of our lives. In Jesus' name. It is our prayer as we dismiss today. Amen. Don't forget, corporate prayer begins tomorrow at 6 a.m. on the corporate prayer line. We need some men on that corporate prayer line. Sometimes we only have me and Dr. Uzi on there sometimes. Amen. We need some men on them. Amen. Men, get on that prayer line. 6 a.m. Amen. Glory to God. Men always ought to pray. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Glory to God. 6 a.m. Amen. Monday through Friday. Amen. Corporate prayer line. Don't forget about word and count and also our corporate fast on this Tuesday. Corporate fast this Tuesday. The Lord told me, he said, I respond speedily and expeditedly in the prayers that are offered to me in a fast. Glory to God. So we're fasting according to Isaiah 58, verse 6 through 14. All right, that concludes. Please refer to the website and the Facebook page for all the announcements coming up this week so you can be prayerful for the things that the ministry are involved in. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It is our prayer declaration to our Heavenly Father on all of our behalf that God's riches and best be yours. Amen. You can be this awesome.